One of the student participants described this project as the epitome of experiential learning. And what we try to do in this is get folks to focus on the underlying, in some cases, unconscious dynamics that go on in groups and teams and organizations. So this experiential learning exercise that we put people through for about a day and a quarter kind of rips off the notion of a goal or a project and makes people focus immediately and frequently in an uncomfortable way on the interpersonal dynamics right away so that they can observe themselves in relation to the group, observe others, and think in a more conscious way about the dynamics of the group itself in a way that will enable folks to be more mindful in their group interactions. Uh, it's an immersive experience. People are in small groups and large groups, and the facilitators serve the role of reflecting back and sometimes posing questions about what's happening. What the facilitators don't do is explain things to students. And what's very uncomfortable for students is they want to know what's happening. They want it explained what's the purpose of what's happening. And the facilitators, I think probably much more than any faculty normally would feel comfortable with, just won't offer them answers. They'll just reflect the question back and students have to find their own answers which usually come after the experience. I think their goal was simply to reflect back on the student or to put back on the student the question or the, uh, or, or, or the task, how do I figure this out? Implicit in there is that the students have the skills and the, and the resources to be able to figure it out on their own. So one of the advantages as well, um, in addition to the boundary crossing and, and learning with others, is actually creating some room for students to try something on with people they'll probably never see again. Um, and what would it be like if I took this leadership action, or I took this leadership in action, or I worked against my usual preference, what would happen? And I think the working across schools also helps with that. Yeah, it's, it's strictly Las Vegas rules. So <laughs> what happens in one of these conferences stays in one of these conferences. There's no notes, no recording. And, and uh, you know, you'd get, we would get comments like, this was deeply unsettling. Um, but then, you know, we, we, we learn to actually be glad with a response like that because w often with students, we talk to them later, four, six weeks out, and they're starting to see how that uh, deeply unsettling feeling was translating in things uh, uh, in terms of their own self-awareness and how they behave in groups. We're under no illusion that this one workshop experience for a day and a quarter is going to dramatically change people's practice in groups, but we do think that it will dramatically give people pause. <laughs> Students have said, I learned a lot more from the experience in a day and a quarter than from reading books. Our model or our experiment was, compared to all these, it, this is interactivity taken to a whole other dimension or level of intensity. Uh, and interactivity is great, but I just think the, the, the kind of um, challenge and risk and uncertainty involved in that was just an, an order of magnitude different.